Voice for Victims with Patricia King and Michelle Burkett. Well, hello there and welcome to Voice for Victims. If you have been a victim in any circumstance, we want you to know that you have a voice. And your voice and other voices around you that want to support you can bring freedom mm -hmm. to you. And that's our heart. With me today I have Michelle. Hello. <laughs> Michelle Burkett is the director, actually, for Voice for Victims. And if you know of a victim of sexual abuse, spiritual abuse, emotional abuse, domestic abuse within the church, we have help. And you can go to voiceforvictims.life and find out more about that. And so, Michelle, I would just want to thank you for you and your team mm -hmm. just uh, working relentlessly all the time, the network that you've built yeah. to help victims so that they can know freedom. But today, we want to talk about being free from shame. Yes. And of course, shame is something um, abusers use mm -hmm. uh, when they are victimizing someone. Yeah, they count on it. Mm -hmm. uh, that it's one of the things that they will use even to help people, you know, manipulate into silence. Uh, they count on that shame. They instill the shame. They, um, you know, so many times you'll hear things that are that have been said of, you know, well, you've made me do this. This mm -hmm. is your fault. Or if you had just mm -hmm. and. So often, Patricia, even after you're out of that environment, out of and away from the abuse, and even after there's even been healing that has come into some areas with that, that lingering shame is still there. And when we talk about voice for victims, this is not the voice that we want you to hear. This is not the voice that we want to be speaking to you, that voice of shame. No way. And through the blood of Jesus and because of who he is and his grace, Hebrews 9 talks to, to us about how that, that blood is able to erase every, every place of shame in our conscience, mm -hmm. everything that we carry, that there is a freedom that comes because of Christ. Mm -hmm. And those are not the things that he wants us to continue to right. carry. And shame um, ha has levels. I mean, we've heard uh, many stories, especially of abuse in extreme cases, mm -hmm. where the abuser will uh, put some kind of guilt or shame right. on the person for even being in the position that they're in. Mm -hmm. And then will shame them further by saying, and if you go tell anyone, right. um, they will lose their life and it will be your fault mm -hmm. or this will happen and it, it, right. it will be your fault or I will lose my ministry right. and it will be your fault, mm -hmm. right? So it's, this, it is, it's putting a blame mm -hmm. with attached shame to it mm -hmm. that uh, paralyzes the victim. Yes. And that's what shame does. It paralyzes mm -hmm. you. And I remember um, before I was b born again, mm -hmm. I was out at a nightclub and my friends had gone home and I'd stayed on. I was dancing and drinking and doing things that were, of course, a setup by the enemy. And there was a man that I had met there that asked if he could walk me home. So I said, sure. I was, you know, flattered that he would want to walk me home. And when he, he walked me home, he walked me to my door, I went to say good night, and he, he pushed his way in. Mm. And he, um, he raped me. Wow. And sure. then... Um, after he raped me, I was paralyzed, actually. I was on, in, in the, um, it, it was in a, a bathtub. He threw me into the bathtub that mm. didn't have water in it, but he raped me in the bathtub, and I was paralyzed. I was lying there mm. in the bathtub, paralyzed with fear. And as I watched him shoot up on heroin, wow. and he passed out uh, from, from what he shot up with. So I, I eventually got myself out of the bathtub and wrapped a, a blanket mm -hmm. around me and went and sat on my sofa, and from the sofa, I could actually see him on the floor there. And I was paralyzed mm -hmm. in fear, paralyzed. Mm -hmm. And the TV had been on, uh, but it had all the fuzzies because it was um, in the night hours and they had gone off the air. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, it came on the air again mm -hmm. to the morning news. And on the morning news, as I'm sitting there, paralyzed in fear, shaking with everything in me, 
not knowing what to do. I mean, I should have run out and got some help. I could have, you know, phoned for some help, but I didn't because shame said, this mm -hmm. is all your fault. Mm -hmm. You had no right being in that club. You had no right staying there after your friends left. Mm -hmm. You had no right drinking as you drunk. You had no right asking a man that you didn't know to walk you home. Mm -hmm. You had no right even bringing him up to your door. So all this was being, being right. rehearsed in my mind. Right. I was too ashamed to release my voice. Mm -hmm. But there on the screen, they were they showed a, a picture of an individual who was wanted for murder. And guess who it was? Wow. The man in my bathroom. Yeah. Well, wow. now I'm really paralyzed. Now, yeah. why didn't I go to the phone then? Yeah. We didn't have cell phones then, but mm -hmm. there was a phone in my apartment. Mm -hmm. I could have picked up the phone and called police, mm -hmm. but I was too ashamed to do so. Mm -hmm. And so I just sat there shaking mm -hmm. in the fear because shame causes fear. Right. It's very paralyzing. And um, I watched him get up and he looked in front of the mirror and straightened his hair put his clothes on and went out the door. It went right past me. Wow. Which even though I didn't know it was, you know, I, I didn't know the Lord at that mm -hmm. time, but I know now that the Lord he had protected you. me, right? <laughs> yeah. Because he walked right past me. Wow. And um, even after he left, I did not report. My, my roommate came home, mm. um, like within the hour, she was on a midnight shift. She was a nurse that worked in the same hospital as I did. <laughs> and she came home, and I was I was too ashamed to tell her. Wow, Patricia! I got off the couch. I I um, cleaned myself up, and <clears throat> she came home, and I never mm -hmm. said a word. Wow, shame. Yeah, yeah, it's powerful. And <coughs> what it also does is um, it brings then a separation between us and others because there's always that little place where it's like we're hiding this this place that we hope nobody gains entrance to because yeah. because because you think that they're going to think you're stupid exactly or, you know, yeah that's what i thought oh she'll think i'm stupid yeah. and why yeah. did i set myself up mm -hmm. and if i could even give another title to shame is sometimes that's self-hatred Mm -hmm. Because, you know, scripture says, you know, love your neighbor as you love yourself. And when we love ourselves, we actually come into alignment with God's heart for us because he loves us so, so completely. So when we have these places where it's like these little pockets where we hope nobody finds out about or where, um, you know, what, e even, even sometimes in simple things of... Um, Maybe, maybe hearing the enemy and his voice of accusation that has brought then shame to us. Like, you know, you're not, you're not reading your Bible enough. You're not doing this enough, you know, because shame always puts us in a it's striving a mode, right? Mm -hmm. So, and there's a religious spirit that, can, that attaches itself to shame and thrives off of shame mm -hmm. because it's about my performance. Yeah. Yeah, do you know, Michelle, that two years after I was raped, in fact, I was raped twice in the same year. Wow, and so then I was double shame. Wow, right? yeah. But two years later, I didn't even realize, because you continue on with life. Mm -hmm. You know, you go to work, you you know, you, you continue, but your soul yeah. is, is in a dark place. Yeah. And without even knowing it, really, you just you just have to do what you do to survive. Yeah. Two years later, I I came to the Lord. But the night that I came to the Lord, I felt so full of darkness and shame. I felt I was the most evil person on the face of the earth. And yet, when I look back, I, you know, I, you know, I wasn't that bad of a person, but I felt I was, I believed I was right. because of the layers of shame. Right. And once shame begins, it, 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 it does stack yes. layers on you. And that night that I received Jesus Christ as my savior, I said, Lord, I don't even know if you would want to come into my life like you did the people that told me about mm -hmm. you up the street there at the Bible study that night. But I said, I, I have nothing to offer you. I'm just a dark mess inside. Mm -hmm. um, but if you'd like to come in, I would really like you to come in. And he didn't hesitate. Yeah. And his yeah. love, when he came in, he came in like liquid love. And mm -hmm. the thing that I remember, clear as a bell, I remember guilt and shame Mm. being lifted on up out of me. It came out of me at the entrance of his yeah. love. And I knew that I cried and cried and cried. I felt so pure, so relieved, so yeah. light um, because he, he loved me so much. Mm -hmm. And his love will deliver you from shame. That's right. 
it's just like what Michelle said. It's not about our performance. It's not about being judged for being a bad person or whatever. No, no, no. It's about his love that came to deliver you from yeah. the lies of the enemy, from the tragedies that happened to you. And if you reach out to him right now, his love will come in and deliver you from shame. Yes. and uh, put you on a track where you can enjoy the fullness of all that he has for you. Yes, don't continue to live with that, with that shame's voice inside of you and separating you from others, from yourself, and from God. We have a special guest today. Her name is Shannon Hare Hodges. And Shannon is a member of the Women in Ministry Network and a beautiful minister. I always really love to hear the word of God come through Shannon. She's got a good way of presenting and she hears the heart of God in his word. And Shannon has written a book called Be be beautiful and it's be beautiful and it talks about um, discovering God your true identity and healing from toxic Christians and Shannon's here today to talk to us about shame hey Michelle hey Patricia thank y'all both for having me on your program today it's a true honor to be here and I have such a passion and a burden regarding the subject of shame and I want to share a little bit about my testimony and then step into some practical things that God took me through to overcome this emotion and the spirit of shame. Shame is where you feel naked, exposed, and vulnerable. It's when something happens to you or something's done to you and or or you feel like you're you're stupid or dumb. And all of a sudden, it's just like the shame comes over you. And for me, it was a paralyzing emotion where I just withdrew and wanted to hide. And the way I hid was I have a very bubbly and outgoing personality. And it's a gift that God's given me. But instead of using it as a gift that God's given me, I used it as a shield to hide myself from the world so that they could not see me. I did not want to be seen. And so that smile was a perfect mask to hide all of the shame. My first um, introduction to shame that I remember was when I was six years old. And from that time, it seemed like that emotion was my constant companion. But as time went on and more woundings happened through sexual trauma, then I became it was where I call toxic shame, where shame became my identity. I did not I did not know anything else but shame. Shame was who I was. And with that, of course, comes that that the hiding and with shame is always two buddies that like to partner up with shame, and that is fear and insecurity. And see, Satan wants to keep us trapped in fear and shame and insecurity so that we cannot go to God to be seen and we cannot allow others in to be seen. For me, when I went to people to, to gain freedom and get help, I was met where my trust was breached. I was mishandled and at one time I was just set aside. And so I was sitting there wondering, what do I do? I need help, but no one wants to help me. So that turned into, on top of the shame, is I'm unworthy. I'm unworthy to be free. I'm unworthy of help. And so when I thought about being seen from other people, which is intimacy, into me see, that meant humiliation and rejection. And so from that, I just, I didn't want to be seen. I didn't trust anybody with my heart. I didn't trust anybody to see who I really was in the struggles. And I, I grew up in church and I was a, a, a Christian. I loved Jesus, but at the same time, the things that were happening in my life turned into a promiscuous lifetime, lifestyle and a life of sin. And from that, I just felt hopeless, like there was no way out. And it was always a tug of war. And the thing that the Lord showed me was that a prison cell and that I was in that prison cell, it was an old timey type jail where I my hands were braced up against the wall that with chains and then my neck and then my feet. 
and it was my, my voice was taken from me and I could not speak up. I needed help, but I was afraid and I was afraid of God as well. And so Jesus, when I finally cried out, the catalyst of change for me was when my daughter left around 11 years ago, maybe 12 years ago. And it was very traumatic for us. It was not a, a good situation. And from that place is all that stuff that I just jammed down, came up, bubbling out. And I was like, God, I need help. After two years of depression, I went on a journey and began to seek God. And I told him, I want to know if this word of God is real, if the book of Acts and the Christians in that is real, I want to see it. I want to learn it. I want to know it. And I want to walk in it. And so through that journey, Jesus took me and cleansed me. And I'll share that um, another time. But for, for now, the main nugget that I would like to give to you is he took me on a journey to get to know God. Father God, I was terrified of God. I thought he was hard and cold and judgmental and just waiting to just pounce as the least little infraction. And so I hid from him just like Adam and Eve hid from him in the garden. And so I tried to cover up with my own outgoing personality and hiding but God allowed me the space to get to know him, that he's a good God. And as He, we got to know each other, and he knows us, but he allowed me the opportunity to know him, to have the shields come down and open my heart to him and allow him to see truth in my heart. Because without truth, there is no freedom. The scripture says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. But when the spirit of faith, fear and the spirit of shame and the spirit of insecurity are all bottled up in there. It's tormenting and it's not space for God. And so my nugget to you today is get to know the Father God first and open your heart to him. Allow him to see the truth in you. Tell him the truth because that's where I started on my journey. And it made a huge difference to be able to work out and step out of that place of shame and allow myself to be seen by God and, and, and to be heard as well and to listen and see him. And that branched out into people because we are called to be in relationship and community and Satan does not want that. I want to leave this scripture with you. Psalm 34, four through five. Listen to my testimony. I cried to God in my distress and he answered me. He freed me from all my fears. Gaze upon him. Join your life with his and joy will come. Your face glistens with glory and you'll never wear that shame face again. Back to you. Shannon, thank you so much and for presenting to us keys and steps to walk out of that shame. And what a beautiful testimony you have. One of the things I'd like to add to those partners that come in with shame is pride. Sometimes pride is the thing that will keep us from even opening those places up to others or to God. And sometimes it's a weird thing how that they can kind of interconnect with one another. But there is something so powerful, right, Patricia, about just, you know, before God first, right? Just saying, God, man, this is, this is what's going on. This is what's plaguing me. This is what's happening in me. It's not like he doesn't know already. Mm -hmm. He forensically knows you. He knows everything about you. He knows every thought before you have that thought. And in him, you know, the scripture says that he, his truth makes us yeah. free. So when we bring those things and we, we just decide to get really real with God and open those things up to him and allow the Holy Spirit to speak truth to you in those places. And then when he says it, believe him because he's not going to lie to you. So when he's talking to you about how precious you are to him and, and how he holds you so very dear and how that you can let go of those places of shame believe him mm -hmm. because it's true and you can be free. Mm -hmm. And I really feel, Michelle, over a number of our viewers that 
God wants you to know that his compassion is great toward you. Yeah. And, and shame, a lot of times, is like that religious voice yeah. will say, you don't deserve compassion, you don't deserve mercy, you don't deserve love, you don't deserve anything, you are unworthy. It's shame speaking, mm -hmm. and shame is a liar. It's a lying demon. That's right. And I just break the power of it off of you right now. Amen. I break the power of shame off of you. I break its control. I break its little kingdom and its power off of you in Jesus' name. Amen. And we just want to yes, let you know that there is help for you. If mm -hmm. you, especially if you've been uh, victimized sexually or uh, spiritually, emotionally, mm -hmm. domestically, physically, and you're wearing shame as a result of it, mm -hmm. we have help for you. Yeah. And we found um, at Voice for Victims that even for people that get to, to share their heart, Mm -hmm. in, a, in a confidential atmosphere, they get to share their heart and get some intercession mm -hmm. that oftentimes that, that is, is an enormous step to freedom. And it makes such a difference within your life. Mm -hmm. And so go to voice number four victims dot life for more information. But also we have a Facebook that you can join as well, where there's a lot of great input there, where you can get encouragement and find help. We have a network of people that we work with that covers all different types of abuse. A lot of professional help is available. We want to help you. We want you free in Jesus. Let's get the shame lifted off. Let's get the abuse issues healed. And so that you're no longer a victim, but you are a victor. Amen. Voice for victims dot life. Go there and um, <laughs> just peruse the site. We've got lots of resource there for you to discover too. Mm -hmm. Sometimes knowledge is what gives you power mm -hmm. to overcome. And so we don't want to see you without what you need. And um, also for those of you that feel like you would like to financially support this department of Patricia King Ministries, we so appreciate mm -hmm. that. And there's a giving portal on the site there, or you can go right to patriciaking.com uh, if you want as well. But uh, thank you so much for those of you who have mm -hmm. supported this ministry and who have just fire in you to see yeah. captives set free. Yeah. God bless you and we'll see you next time.